Good day everybody, welcome to Studio S. Yes, I'm in a Tesla Model S today, not our usual Model 3. Our Model 3 is sick and in ICU at the moment, not with coronavirus, but with charging issues. Similar things, I guess you could call it, I suppose. So, I thought I'd do this quick video just to highlight the differences and little niggling annoyances and stuff I noticed being a Model 3 owner, now driving a Model S for the first time. So about this car, this is our Tesla loaner car. It is a P85D, earlier model with a front round founder's face on the front. The front round face on the... So yeah, about this car. It is a Tesla Model S P85D. It is our Tesla loan car from Sydney. Now, being a P85D, it has insane mode and insane mode plus, which are locked out. Which is annoying because being a performance model 3 driver i wanted to give this a go and just compare the two obviously as you do went to put it into insane plus ah it's all grayed out can't select that ah so i will so it is a p85d chill mode edition you can't complain i guess i suppose it is like technically a high car and below that other people say so. understandable first thing i don't like about this though cup holders under this armrest really is annoying I mean, you've got like a you know, cup of drink, coffee, whatever you put in there, Slurpee, stuff like that, right under your arms. I drive with my, this arm resting on the steering wheel to keep autopilot happy. Elbow resting on your um, armrest, which is right at the cup holder. That is annoying. That's a pain in the butt. And second thing, we, I normally drive a long trip, went for a long drive in this last night to go check out, try and go comet spotting and some night photography in the mountains. Took a water bottle with us nowhere to store the water bottle because there's no door pockets which is very unusual to be honest which means the water bottle being round as normally are they roll around in this massive cavity down here huge storage bay you got down here i mean you could fit like three small children in there water bottles i love it they just roll around all over the place to make a hell of a racket and get annoying so there's that um and also autopilot autopilot is on this little tiny stalk here on the left hand side of the steering column and to flick it on you double tap it towards you or forward I guess or towards your backwards depending on your point of view. To adjust your distance to the current front there's a little round knob on the end here you got to twist up and down to adjust the distance which coming from Model 3 is quite annoying sometimes because you got to flick off autopilot to go around a slower car or something like this because this doesn't go around normal cars it's only AP1 I'm assuming just keeps its lane, does its thing, changes lanes of indicator, that's it. So if you want to manually take control, I found myself flicking off autopilot, but what I found I've done is on here, I've put the car in neutral. So I've flicked it into neutral, put the indicator on, put the foot down, nothing happens. That's happened a few times now, but you do, after a while, you do get used to the autopilot stick being down under there. But yeah, coming from Model 3 to this, that really is, um, caused a few issues so far for me. That's just me. Plus sides, the car's big. It really, it feels big. It drives like a big car. The air suspension is awesome. It just rides a lot better than the um, than our Model 3, which is great. Then again, you expect it with a car that's worth a lot more and a lot bigger. Because again, as this is a, as a loan car, you have to adjust the seats into your position, obviously. Now, once the doors close, it's very difficult to get your hand down here to adjust the seats. It's like, you do need a very, you need a squashed hand to get down there. Or you have to open the door to adjust the seat, which is a bit annoying. Another one of those little niggly things you get. I have noticed with Mercedes, though, the seat adjustments are in the door. I'm not a fan of because once you've got your seats adjusted, how often do you really use them? So I understand them being down on the seats there and rarely used, so there's no point having them somewhere easy to get to. But having them like that where you can't actually get your hand in them when the door's closed does make it a bit annoying. Obviously, the front trunk being a dual motor, my last says the, the front is not as big as the single motor, obviously, there's no deep bit there, but it's still far bigger than the Model 3. Boots far bigger, which is cool. I'm pretty impressed with the Model S. It's a big car, it feels big. It drives like a big luxury car. It's got the air suspension, so it's a nice cushy ride compared to the 3. The windy country roads last night, it seemed to handle reasonably well. I would say it's as sort of nimble as the 3 would be. But again, it is a big luxury barge. Yeah. All, over, all, all in all, I'm pretty happy the way it drives. I, quite, I could quite happily drive one like this, like this or a Model X. But yeah, but that armrest drink holder is just something I couldn't live with, which is annoying. Also with this, visibility out the back is a bit crap, to be honest. 
that back window is very narrow and looking for that rear vision mirror. And on top of that, you've got those three big headrests across the back there as well. So, unfortunately, rear vis not the best. Side visibility with mirrors set correctly is about the same. About the same. Glass ceiling, about the same again, except the locked sunroof, unfortunately. Sun visor here, to me, seems to be a bit low compared to my, um, my three. The pluses, big luxury barge. Plenty of power, P85D, even though it is in chill mode. Still far better than any other car on the road, which is great. Huge screen is cool. It's portrait mode, unfortunately, for his landscape. That would sort of man, landscape curve, that'd be cool. But I do like the sound of binnacle. I've never really cared much for them. So I figured being a Model 3 driver now, you sort of get used to the being the, center, the central screen over there looking at your speedo. But with this, you sort of it's right there in front of you, anything you need, your autopilot, all that sort of stuff is there, which is right in front of your lie line, which is pretty cool. I can see why a lot of people coming from Model S to Model 3 so we didn't like it over there. But to me, it's it's good. I don't mind it. It's fine. You see the information you need. That autopilot is not the best. It is autopilot 1, so obviously it's going to nowhere near the same qualities of autopilot on the 3. But it does its job and it does it well. It keeps the lanes good enough. Windy country roads, it tends to ping pong between the edges of the lanes, but still stays in the lane. The, um... No navigating autopilot, none of that sort of stuff. No lane change, that sort of crap. But, yeah, motorways at least don't need it. One positive I have noticed with autopilot is it doesn't nag you very often, or nowhere near as often as it does in the Model 3. I don't know why that is. But, yeah, I've just noticed that you can go a lot longer with your hands off the wheel with this, and um, it's not going to beep at you, which is good. Or bad, depending on your point of view. But, yeah. So that's it. My thoughts on driving a Model S compared to a Model 3. Would I own one? If it wasn't for that armrest and a drink holder right there and needs door pocket holders, and I'll be happy. And then, yes, I'd happily own a Model S. But apart from that, I like it. Cool. Here we are, back in our Model 3. Finally back after 29 days. Video coming soon on what exactly what happened with our lovely Model 3 here. But yes, anyway, to continue on about my comparisons, being a Model 3 driver to a Model S. A few other things since getting back in the Model 3, sort of I noticed, which I didn't notice going from the 3 to the S, but going from the S back to the 3, you notice, strangely, a lot. And those are one-pedal driving. I know the Model S has autopilot, but it doesn't have the one-pedal driving. It sort of stops with the car in front if the car in front has stopped, but when you pull up the set of lights, normally you foot on the brake and just let go of the brake, the car will start to just roll backwards or forwards or whatever the slant of the rate is on at the time. So it doesn't have one power driving. You've got to hold your foot in the brake till the hold comes up, then it stays. One little difference I noticed, you get used to it pretty quickly, nothing major. Next one was the um, speed sign recognition. I noticed this on the motorway, especially the new M8 motorway in Sydney, which has just been opened up. The Model 3 coming back through that tunnel thought the road zone, road speed zone for there was 60 kilometers an hour, when obviously it's not, it's 80 kilometers an hour. And constantly the car was saying, you know, setting autopilot to 60 kilometers an hour, which was a pain in the butt. So I had to set it to standard autopilot and just um, steer manually. Whereas the Model S coming through that same road, read the signs 80 k's an hour and sat autopilot 80 k's an hour on a brand new road. No dramas at all. That's one difference. I guess that's the differences between autopilot 1 and the new autopilot 3 hardware. Maybe the mobile, the mobile eye, I think it was, a patent issue. Who knows? But Elon apparently says um, traffic speeds on recognition is coming back. So, yes, that would be another good improvement. Bring the cars back up to equal spec, I guess, you could say. Another thing that I really noticed, too, was um, I like listening to my music loud. I like music. In the Model 3, though, when you're listening to it loud and you turn autopilot on, the volume drops quite substantially to hear the bing, boom, boom, bing, that sort of stuff, right? The Model S didn't do that. The volume dropped, but nowhere near as noticeable. And it was actually, I, I could quite easily tolerate it. So I'm singing along loud music and autopilot on off. No drama. Model 3, though, yeah, it's a big difference. You notice it. And the second last one I can think of now, from my little list I've got right here in front of me, the self presenting door handles. Now, I know the Model 3 is a cheaper car. It's probably never going to have it because if they want to make it more expensive, obviously it will. But um, yeah, to keep it under budget, I kind of see why these Model 3 doesn't have the self presenting door handles. But you do get used to it with that S, even after just a few days. You still sort of get used to the door popping out and just grabbing it and opening the door. One difference, but understand why can't, you know, it's nothing you can actually complain about. It's just difference in the models of the cars, I guess, and the price, and the price points. You get that. 
But one thing I noticed with the Model S is that the charging port door doesn't self-close. Twice now, I unplugged the car in the morning to go to work, backed out of our garage here. Wondered why there was a yellow light flashing on the dashboard. And it's like, oh, it's the charging port. So now I've got to stop and pull over, get out of the car, close the charging port and drive off. It's just, yeah. Strange, I thought the Model S would have done that. But for some reason, it didn't. It's just, yeah. Very weird. There's all those little annoying things. So anyway, back to the previous video and wrap this up. So once again, thank you Tesla for giving me a Model S loan car while ours is getting fixed. <coughs> no, I haven't got coronavirus. I've been talking too much. So, if you have got this far, again, thank you for watching. Take care. Take care of yourselves. Carefully through the coronavirus stuff. And drive safe. Bye. There's that. You fucking drive. Neutral. Damn it. <laughs> Someone yabbering away on their phone beside us. It's always smart. But then again, I'm talking to a camera. Yada yada yada. Fan of my informer. Yada goddamn red lights. Of course, a truck's going to go straight through it, isn't it?